in the secret world, things tend to come around again when you least expect it. Hello, welcome to Answers. In this lore series, I try to answer the questions raised in the last episode of Questions, using materials both in-game and out. Today I am answering the mysteries of the Polaris. Spoilers ahead. The island we arrive at seems like a nightmarish hellscape because it basically is. From the vanishing of Tyler Freeborn, we know that the fog is not really part of our reality. It's a warped nightmare realm of filth and seaweed, and the island that Polaris crashed on sits at the very border of the fog, subject to its influence, but still mostly within our world. So we see features that might exist in nature exaggerated and copied. For example, these stone pillars are actually a real rock formation in Maine. They could never grow this big or have this many because the very forces that create this formation eventually will lead to its destruction. But here, subject to the influence of the dreamers, perhaps the pillars are created in a matter of days and then erosion stops and moves on to the next. In addition, in the real world, these sort of pillars are subject to some of the highest tides in the world, a good 30 feet, as the fog has brought a low tide that never seems to come back in. That would exaggerate the height greatly. So why are there signs of human habitation on this island? Well, the house is likely a lighthouse keeper's shack, we can see a very similar one, almost identical in fact, in Savage Coast. The boardwalk is a little more odd because it's clearly not up to safety codes at all. But the other signs of active habitation, like the light posts and the retaining logs, it stands out as especially rickety. And given how the terrain has been warped, it's unlikely it could have been here for very long. It's possible its condition is related to the erosion of the stone pillars, with its state of rot being accelerated by the fog. It's also possible it was a recent construction made out of a collapsed boardwalk. The Drog do know how to use tools, after all. They could have built this. I mean, could easily be their handiwork here. But why do the Drog need steps? Well. That's because they're poorly suited for flying, except the one. That's also likely why they needed a boat, because they're also not very good swimmers despite being aquatic. While they may trudge along the bottom of the sea, a boat would get them here a lot faster. And they do have the technical wherewithal to use it, at least far enough to run it aground. As for that boat, notice how all of the shipping crates come from Psycoil, if they have an Orochi's company name at all. The only other place in the game where we meet Drog is in the Psycoil level of the Rochi Tower. Documents on that level inform us that Psycoil just discovered them while they were drilling. Later they brought in Vali researchers to examine them. That's probably what Miss Radcliffe was talking about when she said things were getting really gross. And it's a good thing she got out, as it appears most of the researchers have been filth infected. And we find this room full of barrels that the filth was leaking out of. The researchers are hostile to the drug, which was understandable. We know that different strains of filth don't get along. But this filth was actually drilled for in the Sargasso Sea, where the drug are native. The same dream that created the drug from the nightmares of Vikings. If you observe the fight between the Drog and the researchers. The Drog are actually damaged by filth, the same filth strain that created them. Likewise, the exploding pods on the Polaris are all listed as weed wreathed. Now we know the red sargassum is a strain of the filth, maybe one step removed from the oily filth. It seems the sargasso weed actually makes their reproduction more difficult by causing their pods to explode. It's possible then that their goal in Kingsman is not merely to spread the filth, but to reproduce. They needed to escape from the Sargasso in order to reproduce on this scale. And to do that, they hijacked a ship that was meant to imprison them. After all, 
Note the crates ripped open from the inside, and the fact we know that Orochi has a habit of just shoving monsters in shipping crates. As for the large tentacles strangling the ship, perhaps we can't see the pod, because it is the source of the fog. We see a massive pod in Blue Mountain spewing smoke into the air. The Polaris is big enough to support a much larger pod, perhaps the one that the fog came from initially, a mobile platform for invasion. But then what of the lanterns? What of the campfires? These lead clearly to the ship itself. Perhaps we're not the drog's first visitor here. We know Beaumont is in league with them, but how much control does he actually have? I believe he has very little control. Remember his frustration with the fog as he was surveying Blue Mountain? He needed the sword, and the Drog were happy to help with that, but now they pursue their own agenda. Whatever gave him the impression he could control them to begin with? They're a species of inhuman monsters, with a bizarre reproductive cycle. Perhaps he has a more personal connection with them than it might seem at first. Uh, but that's a story for another time, when I will also discuss the Varangian. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate all the support from my subscribers and my patrons. If you enjoyed this, consider showing your support by donating to me on Patreon, or by doing all the standard YouTube stuff. Once I hit $20 on Patreon, I will do a special 20 plus minute long episode on the timeline of the fall of Solomon Island. And if you did not like this video, then... <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs>